Samsung Galaxy S9 after 24 hours. Viewer and I hope subscriber Mahesh Walatara asked, does it blow? Well, hmm. Hey there friends on YouTube, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Thanks for showing up. If it's your first time here, do the likey, subscribey. Other things, if you like this video. If you don't, well, <laughs> if you've been here before, then you know what to expect. Ahesh, great question. <laughs> Let me give you an answer based on my 24 hours of use. Coming from the iPhone 10, it did give me a little trouble making a switch. I kept swiping up from the bottom of the phone and nothing happened. I kept waiting for Face ID to unlock my apps and it didn't. It took me a while to get used to pressing the software home button again. But now I'm starting to get used to it. There were the little differences in the operating systems. I started to see what was good about Android and Samsung phones and what was not. Let's talk about the hardware. It's a gosh darn pretty phone. Samsung's design has really settled into its own and they are distinct enough now with super high quality glass and metal to put them on the Apple level perhaps when it comes to design. The trade off to that prettiness is I found the phone impossible to hold on to. I really like the matte finish on the sides and I was hoping that would help with some uh, grippiness but they're really too thin to re do much at all so fail on that. It's not very grippy and uh, I almost dropped it a bunch of times. Of course everybody's got to watch the drop tests because people are stupid enough to want to break their phones to prove something. But after seeing said drop tests I can't imagine anyone carrying this thing around uh, without a case on and that will basically ruin the design but you will be able to hold on to the phone. And no, I'm not going to slap a D-brand skin on it. D-brand skins are the tech enthusiasts' idiot tax. $20 for a 3M sticker? <laughs> Jesus. I went right out to the Best Buy today and I grabbed the rugged case that Samsung released with the phone. I put that thing on and now I feel like I could go anywhere and do anything. It's got a pretty ribbed back and it's actually kind of rubbery. Uh, I don't exactly like how it looks on the phone. I don't like I don't, but it's different. It's got a kickstand. Kickstand. Samsung always has some cool ideas for their branded cases, and this one is pretty cool. So it's not as thick as the Note 8 rugged case either. That was a problem. The buttons on the phone feel pretty nice. I still accidentally hit the Bixby button all the time, but I have tried to start using Bixby and learning what it can do. I am now a level two Bixby user. <laughs> Let me know what you like to do with Bixby. Keep it clean, folks. Please, keep it clean. I was really glad that Samsung moved the fingerprint reader back here, but what I've discovered, at least on the S9, is it's too low. Too low. The camera is right exactly where the fingerprint reader is on most other Android devices that have the back fingerprint reader. So I have to like move my finger and I don't always get a solid read, but when I get it on there, it does read. Why does Samsung have such a freaking hard time with this fingerprint reader thing? Are they stubborn? Are they stupid? I don't know which. Maybe it's better on the plus size model, but I don't, I don't know. So. That's something, but the fingerprint reader is still not perfect. I can say that the Snapdragon 845 does seem a little bit snappier. See Snapdragon, snappier? <laughs> I haven't found a place where I would have wanted six gigabytes of RAM yet, yet. The battery life today was pretty awful. I can't judge anything on that first charge, but it was terrible. I'm down to like 20 something, 20% now, seven. I'm down to 19% now and it's 6.30 in the evening. I've had it off the charger for 12 hours. I'll let you know if it gets any better. I haven't spent a ton of time with the camera, but I plan on doing a comparison with the iPhone 10, so I'll put it through its paces. Let me know if you, what else you wanna see in terms of camera. But meanwhile, here are a few shots I took today while we were out and about.
On the software side, things are pretty much as they have been for the past couple of years. The Samsung Experience, TouchWiz, whatever, is still heavy. And it doesn't look like Android. But it does bring some decent stuff to the table, I have to admit. I always forget how much I like the themes that you can download and use. I'm a dark mode guy. And uh, there's a pretty decent selection of free dark mode themes in that theme store. So that makes me happy. I've been back on iOS for long enough to be pleasantly surprised <laughs> that the notifications are uh, more usable on the Android phone. The app switcher on this phone is so much better than the iPhone X. That said, I do miss the control panel. Uh, the, tr the control panel is pretty darn slick and I, it's not as easy to do stuff on this guy. As always, it's annoying that there are two apps for everything here. Two email apps, two calendar apps, two, but does Samsung think they're filling an arc here or something? I mean, is that why we have two of everything? This is why, this is where TouchWiz gets annoying and the extra crap that's on there. It's always refreshing to go back to an iOS device and not have to spend 15, 20 minutes getting rid of all the crap that you didn't want on there in the first place. But that's life. I like that the on-screen display uh, lets you swipe to get to your music audio controls and stuff, but I can't seem to activate it, especially when driving. So to answer Mahesh's question, does it blow? <laughs> no. 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 It's a nice, safe upgrade. I'll have more thoughts about it after I use it for a while. It's not gonna set your world on fire or anything, but given Samsung's recent past, <laughs> maybe that's a good thing. But um, boom. Thanks for being here. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you're new here, please think about liking and subscribing and doing all those things that are so awesome. If you've been here for a while, then just like the video and leave me a comment telling me how awesome I am. Let me know what you might want me to cover in a, in a more full scale review on the Samsung Galaxy S9, and I will make sure to do it again. Thank you. Thank you very much for showing up. My name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech Tech. So, honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.